All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for episode 51 of Cape Side Convos. I am Rick. What's up, guys? This is Quince. All right, so uh, this week we are, are joined again via Zoom. Uh, we're coming to you guys from the recording studio here at Teams 92.5, which is why our voices sound so slick and smooth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, quick little introduction. I, I met this uh, young man training in Colorado. Um, he is a lifelong martial artist. He's been training for 35 plus years. I do call him young man because he has all the spirit and vigor of a man even younger than I am. Um, and the knowledge of someone much older. He is trained. Uh, he is a third degree black belt in Taekwondo. He's trained in uh, Iaido. Uh, he's trained in Enshin Karate. He's trained in Tai Chi. He's trained in Muay Thai under uh, Grand Master Hadi. He's trained in Krav Maga. Um, he's currently training Bang Muay Thai along with his sensei, Dwayne Ludwig. He is the owner of Trans Martial Arts in Longmont. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very, very happy to introduce Coach Tran. Coach, how you doing? Thank you, Coach Rick. <laughs> Thanks for having me here, guys. Um, I'm honored. I'm excited to uh, share a little ninja sprinkles while I can yes. with your community. <laughs> yes, sir. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Um, so uh, this, like, I, I got really, really, really excited about having you on. Um, so last time that uh, Rachel and I were out in Colorado, you uh, were very kind and invited us out to your school to train, to experience a little bit of what your school had to offer. Um, all, it was just an absolutely amazing experience. It was really cool. And then uh, I had the honor of actually getting to chat with you for a little bit after the training. Um, and you are uh, just very, very passionate individual, very excited, um, very eager to share. Uh, yeah, so you, um, yeah, I'm just excited. That was just a long, long way to say I'm excited. <laughs> well, I'm honored. Uh, I appreciate uh, all your kind words. I'm really honored. Uh, yeah, I, one thing I am passionate about is about uh, sharing about my life, my journey, my story that could help out all the people. Yeah. Uh, in this world, you know, I think uh, we all take time to just uh, wake up with a grateful heart and know that, you know, we're in, we're in a better place than most people in the world. And with that in mind, we're, 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 we are already winning, you know, so, so I think that's what we need to do. <clears throat> Absolutely, yeah, for sure, you know, and so I'm being uh, just recently introduced to uh, you, sir, and uh, you gave me the link to your Instagram, so I'm going through uh, some of these, you've got uh, your Ninja Wisdom. Uh, quotes and videos, you know, just uh -huh. right through them. And uh, right off the bat, the first thing I noticed was that uh, gratitude played uh, quite a role uh, as far as how you um, reflected on the day, as far as, you know, what got you up in the morning uh, and kept you doing what you do. Uh, is that something, as far as being grateful, is that something that was taught to you? Is that something that you um, kind of learned or you learned on your own through your own trials? Or how did that come to be? Uh, wow. Well, thanks for uh, <laughs> doing some research. <laughs> At least somebody's watching it. <laughs> um, you know what? I appreciate that. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure if I told Coach Rick about this philosophy I teach uh, my team. I, I coach uh, uh, my leaders in life, and there's a term called uh, icky guy. Did Coach Rick, did I tell you that last time? No. Okay, so icky guy is a term that when, when people feel lost in life, they don't know what they they're really want to do in life, I teach them this philosophy that's helped me out through my life is icky guy. It's a Japanese term that means reason for being. What gets you out of bed every morning? That's icky guy. Let me tell you, there's four things right now that'll get me out of bed that becomes your icky guy. Number one, find what you love. Yeah, find what you love to do. That's called passion. Number two, Find what you're good at. Just because you love doing it doesn't mean you're good at it. I might love painting, but I suck at painting, right? <laughs> Number three, find what you get paid for. Mm. Find what you get paid for. And number four, my last and my favorite one, find what the world needs that you can make better. Now, in, in those four quadrant overlapping is the icky guy. Is what we call fulfillment. You see, I'll use an example in my world. When I was growing up as a refugee, I was from Vietnam, grew up in this country, I came here as a refugee. 
Back then, you know what the number one poster was in the kids' room? Farrah Fawcett. <laughs> oh, man, Farrah Fawcett was like everything. <laughs> but you know what? I was a refugee kid. I didn't, I didn't have much money, but you know what? But poster I bought? Bruce Lee. All over my room. I was a closet Bruce Lee. You know, I wanted to be that kid. So I found what I love already. Number two, found what you could guess what? I took up the martial arts, I started competing. I started winning in tournaments. Hundreds and just, I competed and I started winning, winning. So I found what I was good at. Number three, can I make this into a living? I created a dojo, I made it into a living. Number four, what the world needs. Guess what? The last 27 years I've been open in my dojo, we have contributed to our community. Over so, so many thousands of dollars get back to into our community. Do women's self-defense, uh, scholarship program to make this world better. And now that, over several thousand students walk in our community because we made them better human beings. We can prove back. That is what, so to go back to what Quince was talking about, what wakes me up every day, I don't need an alarm clock. That is my reason for being. That's my purpose. I found my purpose already. So it's easy to wake up. Yes, and it's easy to wake up, but here's the thing, I'll give you a little hint. Wake up every morning, name three things before you put your foot on the floor, three things that you are grateful for. That will kickstart your day. So that's, that's the answer to that question, Quince. Thanks for asking that. That's awesome. <laughs> what, a, what a great answer. What a great answer. I, I can't tell you, because I mean, these uh, concepts, or they're so universal. They're so universal, and it doesn't have to be about uh, fighting. Or, uh, no. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, I found it through music and performing right. and creating, you know, and, and I find it people that love to do whatever business they start. It could have something to do with computers or games, but it seems like you come through these universal understandings uh, on your way. Uh, but it's so, but as we get into these conversations, it's so neat to hear other people's perspective, perspective man. So thank you. So basically, Quince, you found your icky guy. Yeah, absolutely. Right? That passion. And sometimes, I tell you what, here's the, 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 the natural law of life. Not everyone will find that in life. It's very hard. But the people who do will find fulfillment. I'll say yeah. that. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and I love how you don't stop there. I love how you start at finding what you love, finding your passion. But it doesn't stop there either, you know, in regards exactly. to, you know, being now practical you know what are you good at uh how can i make a living how can i provide right. for the people that i care about and then also um what the world needs and how many times rick we talked about the, the purpose of community right and, and to help create it so there's a longevity into it and it it's not just for self you know but it's the people around us it's the people that like that, 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 that vibe with us and that are um that interact with us on a day-to-day uh, that we really truly understand what we're here for almost. Right. You know, right. Like, all, all this knowledge, you know, all these things that we come across for our passion, for our purpose, now it needs to be shared. That's the next part because that yep, will keep yep, going. Yep. Even when I, I, I agree with you more. I love what you're saying. And remember this, guys the word community, the last five words, you just take that part, is unity. Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. It's about bringing people together. Absolutely. Right? Wherever you're at in your life, Wherever community you're in, bring unity in that community. This is where fulfillment will come. I never talk about money. I always talk about people over profit. Mm. Profit is a, is a byproduct. If you open a business, you better make a profit. You know what? You focus on people and you lead people to the path, the profit will always come. That's Amen. Okay. I have always believed in that. Well, I mean, that, that absolutely shows. Uh... Like I said, we, we had the, the pleasure of coming out and training in your school. Um, and yes, I mean, yeah, obviously, you know, you said you're business with that second. Um, so you're doing something right on the business aspect of it. But there were, uh, there had to have been like almost 50 people there doing Rachel and I stock in. I know you were doing, um, you're preparing some of your students for the black belt testing and stuff. So a lot of people you're familiar uh-huh. with uh, from different areas who are showing up and stuff. But, the, the energy, the energy in that room, and people's just raw desire to be there. They're, every single person in that school is trained passionately. They're, they're, they're trained with the purpose of bettering themselves and giving back to their partners. Um, I know, uh, so you guys recited uh, Creed 
that you came up with for your school and for your training. So that, and everybody there that was a consistent student knew it, right? So these, this notion of prioritizing people and then making sure that all of your students are investing into their partners, right? So it's not option it seems in your school to to want to give back, right? Obviously, some days right. some days we take you know, a little bit more, some days we have to give a little bit more, but it's not the exception that people are giving back, right? It's it's the rule there. Um, so, what I guess kind of walk us through, man. I don't know how complex the question is. But walk us through a little bit of what it takes to get to that point with a school like that, on such a large scale. All right. Wow. <laughs> well, here's, let me tell you this, one word to answer your question, because I just met with a school owner a week ago, uh, this Tuesday. He just bought my brother's school uh, in Boulder, Colorado. My brother owned that school for 24 years since my youngest brother. He's now retired. He found this achy guy somewhere else. He's moving to Port, uh, Portugal uh, this week. I wish my brother the best, but he sold that to one of my instructors who was with me for seven years. And he came to me and we trained. You know how I say in life, the biggest way to get to know people is to break bread with people. You eat with people you turn. For me, it's to train with somebody. <laughs> and for me, it's, it's to train. When you know that person who's willing to put in the work and put in the sweat equity like I do every day, man, then I can train with you. Then I can talk. Anyways, here's what I told him. He asked me the same question you did. He's in over his head right now, taking over that, my brother's organization. Yeah. One word to answer that question. Culture. culture. You have to build a culture. And what is our culture here at Trans Longmont? Three words, guys. Every company has a mission statement. Theirs is so flowery, and they don't live it. It's so funny. I read some of these mission statements, some of these things, and the CEO is like, oh, yeah, we do all this. I, I don't see any of it. Here's our mission statement at Trans for the past 27 years. Three words, grow, serve, and love. Everything we do, that's the culture we teach from the very get going. If I hire somebody on my team, right now I have 27 staff members at that one location, 27. I'm just one of the 27. Now, to onboarding my team, they have to understand our culture. So, for example, Coach Rick, when he came to a school, did people come up and uh, greet, the, uh, greet you? Yes, sir. That's the culture. Yes. <laughs> that's the culture. Yeah. That's, that, that's what I do. When people come to a school, the worst thing that can happen is you just sit there in the corner on your own and like, oh, my God, people yelling around here. No one knows me. <laughs> no. Yeah. When you come to our school, everyone's going to come up and say, hi, my name is this. Welcome. That's everyone's. That's everyone's belief in the culture of the trans tribe. Why? It's only through the school of hard knocks. And here's what I mean. When I came to this country, I was a skinny Asian refugee kid that didn't have any money and had no friends. You know, one of the hardest part of me during school was, guys, lunchtime. I sat by myself all my life. No one came over and befriended me. I tell that story to all my students. Never let that happen again. When somebody comes to our school, everyone's obligation is go there and greet that person. That's culture. Forget about business. If you put the right culture in place, the business will follow. So to answer your culture, culture is it. Build a culture, people will follow. Awesome, absolutely. That's, uh, so um, to pump your school up a little bit, I saw, uh, so you and I have uh, kind of known each other for a couple of years. Um, uh, been interacting on social media and stuff like that for a little while and I've noticed uh, this year again uh, Trans Walmart received uh, Martial Arts School of the Year. Right. You guys received that same award last year, right? Right. And, and several years after that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so, uh, uh, let me tell you, uh, I uh, appreciate bringing that up. Let me tell you this. You know, in my uh, area, there's uh, many martial arts schools. There's one of them is really well known. Uh, I won't say it. There's a BJJ school, real well known. Uh, and so forth. And a lot of them, because I follow a lot of them on social media too. So we kind of just see, you know, it's just a brother. You know, a lot of the martial arts school, I'm not saying bad anything, they promote that award coming up and say, please come and vote for us. Right? Which is fine. Nothing bad about that. I'm not saying yeah. anything bad. I don't do that. I just let that happen. 
because when you have a great culture, people will do the right thing for you, Same. right? Mm -hmm. We were awarded that award, not because I didn't, and I pushed it or anything. I had no idea every year when the award comes out. They just call me up, hey, Master Tran, you won the award. I go, yeah. yeah. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. You <laughs> cool. know, but it's not about the award for me. It's about the people who speak about you when you're not around. Sure. That's when you know you're a good leader. Mm. That's when you know you have followers or not. People say, I have followers. Well, I, I, I'll challenge you. Look behind you. See how many people actually follow you because they have to or because they want to. There's a difference. Sir, sure. absolutely. Well, and I, I guess uh, while we're speaking about it, what is the correlation between leadership and serving? And what's the second one? And what? Uh, the correlation between leadership and serving. Serving, okay, man. You know, I get hired to speak. I get hired to speak about leadership a lot. And uh, one of my favorite uh, things is about servant leadership because leadership for a lot of people in this country means this. This means that if you're a CEO, if you are a CFO, if you're the boss, manager, right? How many of you guys, how many of you two would like to go to work every day and say, boss me around every day? No one. Zero. How many people, how many people would like to go work and say, lead me today? Mm. Servant leadership is about serving people. Here's my philosophy. I have a team of 27, I told you guys. You know what my core responsibility is at Trans? Not to serve my student, no. People think that. I serve my team. That's it, I serve my team. My team serves my students, our students. See, people think, oh, because you're the master, you're a CEO, you're president, they serve me. No. I know each and every one of my team members' goals in life and personal goals. I make sure they meet that goal, even though if those goals are not meant for trans anymore. For example, the people that bought my brother's school, very hard to let them go. They were one of my top instructors. I mentored for seven years. But they told me seven years ago, sir, my dreams open up a school someday. I said, I'll make that dream come true. Be patient. Guess what? The time came. It doesn't serve me. I, I didn't want to let them go. But I know as a leader, you do the right thing. You let the people spread their wings. That's how you become a leader. You serve your team. Your team serves the clients. That's the servant leadership. Awesome. Awesome. So there, there's these little pauses in here, uh, Coach Strand. We're uh, once and I are both actually taking notes. This is almost, uh, for me, this is becoming a little bit of a like, leadership workshop um, I uh, so you know one of the benefits of this is yes that you can uh, like I want to share your voice with the people I've met uh, because I think that there's a lot of power there's a lot of amazing um, concepts and there's some, some wonderful knowledge and things you have to share um, one of the benefits for me personally is that I get to hear all of this stuff again because last time we talked talked about a lot of these points um, and I didn't have a, a notebook in front of me. I was just trying to let it wash over me. And so as, as we were driving back to the house that night after training, I was trying to uh, remember to go back through my mental notes and stuff and they were, they were quite a bit lacking. So I'm uh, filling up the page right now, you know, <laughs> making this a little well, bit of personal study. <laughs> hey, I, I, I'm, I'm honored. You know what? When uh, you came to my school, I was honored that you even took the time. That weekend, I know it was crazy. If you drove all the way to Utah, uh, just for a one day training at Bobby, yes, Coach Bobby's school. I see you wear that t shirt there. And yeah. you go back and you came to my school. That tells me you're a, a Kohai. Kohai in Japanese means eager student. Okay. That means you're an eager student. You sure. know what? I want to remind you that this, at any age and any stage of where you're at, even my stage in life, I am still an eager student. Guess what I did this morning? I was a bang Muay Thai. Yes, Train. <laughs> At my age, my stage, banging out these young kids out there, yeah. right? Hey, you know what? Yeah, lead from the front. Mm -hmm. Lead by example. It's easier to just preach than it's action. My thing is always actions. Action, yeah. action, action. Say, talk less, do more. Mm -hmm. Do more. That's what we do. Yeah. You're talking about um, being an eager student, and uh, of course, you've been. Uh, coaching for over 25 years now, which is, which is awesome. Uh, how do you still, when you've got all of these people that come to you with their questions, uh, eager to learn, uh, how do you still 
get in that mindset where you are an individual still learning daily as well? Well, for one, I'll say one word. For me, it's always like one word. Um, Authenticity. Be real with people. Leadership is about being real. People think that, you know, to be a leader, you have to always be tough. You have to show that tough side. No. Leadership is about being real. So yesterday, at the end of my class, I always share a story. Always share a story. So at the end of my Muay Thai class, here's a story I shared. Next Tuesday, our school, we have an open house buddy day. Right, so people in the community come, but here's why I said that. This is, I said, you know, why we're doing this, guys? Let me tell you a little quick little story. When I was at middle school, kids picked on me um, physically and mentally. I had kids who were just punching me, I was getting beat up. My brother, oldest brother, came home one day and uh, he got beat up and he was embarrassed by it. I said, What happened? He goes, oh, I got beat up. A month later, he went to visit that Taekwondo school, signed up there, and didn't tell me. He knew I was a closet Bruce Lee. Right? He knew that already, but he didn't tell me. But three months later, he invited me to his yellow belt testing. He, once I, he would invite me, I go, you were training all this time and you never <laughs> brother? <laughs> and this is it, guys. Back in the 80s, it's not like it is today. Back in the 80s, the floor was concrete. We had to do two knuckles push. I would say two knuckle push up on concrete. I mean, we were old school training, right? I went to yellow belt testing and I was hooked. Because you know why? My brother sent me an invitation to come and watch. And because of that, my life changed forever. Mm. That's why we have Buddy Day. Mm. Because we know that somebody you're going to invite into this school here today, your lives could be changed. Right? There's always something. Now, be real. Talking about what Quince was talking about, be real with people. I tell about my ups and downs in life in front of my team all the time because now there, here's the thing that I think is a great quote to remember. People rather follow a leader who's real than someone who's always right. That is something to think about, right? That's what you do. It's heavy, it's heavy. Absolutely, yeah, so um, kind of when, uh, when I started down my journey of philosophy, uh, uh, one of the first uh, topics I really listened to somebody speak about it, listen to uh, Brene Brown talk about vulnerability, power vulnerability. of vulnerability. Um, and so that was kind of one of the first things I explored in myself is just uh, being honest. Not only, obviously, you have to be honest with yourself, which a lot of times that can be difficult, especially when you're in a place in life where uh, maybe you don't necessarily like the person you are right then. You have to, to come to terms with that, right? But also, um, being in the leadership role, like you said, a lot of times people when they're first discovering leadership is they think they have to be right. And right. Being, when you tell your students or uh, you have people who are, are learning leadership from you, right? People who are studying under you, and you have to go to them and say, okay, I was wrong, or I made a mistake, or I was not right. just the best that I could. Or when somebody who is supposed to be under you corrects you, and you have to battle with your ego and say, yes, thank you, you're right, I was wrong. It's an extremely vulnerable, uh, it's an extremely vulnerable moment when you first start exploring that. But I think that as you get through that vulnerability and you start learning to let go of that ego, and I like the word authenticity a lot better because that resonates you know, now later in my life, further down the road on my journey, that authenticity resonates a lot more because that's really what it is. And I think you notice that in people. When you're authentic, when you're genuine, when you're, you're direct, when you're, okay, I, I don't need to be right. Let's figure out what's the best thing for you, what's the best thing for you, what's the best thing for us, right. school, for the students, and everything. Right? There's such a huge amount of growth that comes with that, right? Just being authentic and getting through that vulnerability and not being scared to just be who you are and let people be who they are, right? Kind of being where they are, right. and all of a sudden, it's mutual authenticity. You can grow, you can start affecting the community. That's, uh, yeah. That's- well, you know what? You know how tiring it is to be fake? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You have to put up a front, be doing all these things because you're strong, all these images. So it's tiring. Sure. Just be yourself. And the, the right people will come, the right vibe will come. 
If yeah. people don't want to follow you, that's okay. I'm not, I'm okay with that. If people follow you, I'm good with that. But it's so tiring trying to be fake, trying to be something you're not. You know, there's only one you and this chance in life is just so short. I'm so grateful for the life I have in this season and being this country and so forth. That I mean, I don't have one life here. I'm going to live it. And there's certain things, path, I, I, I walk a different path than most people. I, one of my favorite, I'm a quote person. One of my favorite quote is, uh, it says, I took the road less travel and that's made all the difference in the world. Sorry. I was that lone kid. No one ever understood me. I took the road less travel and it's made all the difference in the world to me. I don't have many friends in life, but the friends I do have are the one I cherish in my life. You know, they're the one that I can meet up with Quince one day. Oh, let's catch up again. Let's do this. It's awesome. <laughs> you know, we don't have to get mad because we haven't contacted each other or anything. No expectations. You know, just do life <laughs> and flow yeah. with that. You know, yeah. so be be real. I mean, I'm up, I'm down. I certain things. I, I try my best every day. But I, I always tell people, follow me if you want, but don't follow me too close. I fall a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm we'll not see. perfect by no means. I never claim to be perfect. What I do claim is that I'm going to try my best. That's all I can we'll do. For sure. And, you know, we talk a lot about uh, how important it is to trust the process because, you know, when you say be real, you know, when you say take that road less traveled, that's hard to convince yourself the first time to take that first step. Uh, and, you know, I think a lot of us from a younger age, whether uh, it's uh, parental influence or maybe school or teachers, but people tell us what we should be doing, what we need to be right. doing, what we, and we kind of lose right. that ability to uh, kind of think for ourselves. You know, we have all these expectations to live up to, and then we get older, and uh, they end up kind of, you know, drawn within us as far as, like, it comes out in just these weird ways, maybe they're anger issues, maybe they are, maybe it's like addiction or stuff like that, uh, that people uh, aren't able to connect because they're not living their true self. Right, they're hiding and they're covering it up, and they're they're avoiding. It's a, it's a lot of avoidance, um, and it just sends them down that you know that that tough path. So it's it's very true word. It's very true word. Well, I'll say this: uh, what what is your ethnicity, uh, ethnicity uh, Quince? Ethnicity? Yeah. Uh, my, yeah, yeah, yeah. My father is Haitian. My mother is French Canadian and German. Okay. Oh, wow. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Now I say that because in the Asian culture, education is always pushed. <coughs> Education, education, and education over happiness even, right? That's in the Asian culture. My culture is that way, right? I had to break free from that, right? I had to break free from that. I call this the herd mentality. It was herded to the same path. But if you're that one cow that got off of that path and went a different route, the lonelier route, understood what it's like, you will succeed. Yeah, absolutely. Because because guess what? I've never been a formal education. They say that a formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I've always been self-educated. Everything I want to learn, I go full force into it. I YouTube it, I listen to it, I do whatever I can. I'm going to be a master at it, right? And since our mission at Trans to grow, so we love growth, I always ask my team in our monthly meeting, stand up. What did you grow this last month since we spoke? You better come up with something. You better be growing. <laughs> if, you, if you're not growing personally, you're going to be left behind on this team. Everybody yeah. here, even myself, is growing. Because there's a thing called the law of the lid. Let's say I'm here in this organization. I'm master Tran. Here's my team. And here's my student. If I'm not growing, my team continue to grow, they hit the lid. And then once they hit the lid, and I'm still not growing, they can go search somewhere else. Mm -hmm. yes, I always got to be one step above my team, continue to grow so they can grow also. So growth is a huge mission at Trans. Everyone must grow. I don't care what age, what stage you're at. You can't tell me because you're seven years old, you can't do anything. No. You can train an old dog new tricks. Exactly. I really, really believe that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a uh, testament to that. Uh, Coach Train, you just got your blue belt under Sensei Ludwig not too long ago. <laughs> uh, last, last weekend, right? Oh yeah, I know. I, I always laugh because I, uh, some of my, a lot of my students follow me. They said, "Master Tran, you have a blue belt." <laughs> <laughs> I go, "Yep, I'm a perfect example of a student who keeps growing." Yes, sir. I'm never satisfied where I'm at. I'm just That's a student, just like you are. Because to be a leader, you gotta be a student first. Guess what? You got you to be an instructor of being a student. Yes, sir. Never forget that. You always student before you're a teacher. 
Absolutely. Lead by example, guys. Lead by example. Yes, that's on. Uh, so um, every, uh, pretty much every Wednesday, uh, Sensei Ludwig will, will set up a Zoom camera for us. So uh, myself and a couple of our students we can hop on and retrain, and he'll kind of watch over us a little bit. And every single time I'm on, I look. And you always seem to be using the bag at the end of class, right in front of the camera. So I always see you there. And uh, it always gets me pumped up because, you know, like I said, you and I start to get to know each other a little bit and then uh, talking about leadership and stuff. Every single week, you're setting that same example. You're there, you've got the humble mindset, you're listening to what Sensei Lowe was saying, you're trying to learn, you're growing, you're challenging yourself in new ways. So uh, that's just every single week, it's just a really cool thing for me. It always gets me pumped up to see you. And, you know, uh, Sammy's out there, you know, Sammy's in the 60s now. He just got his move. Right. He got his move out back right. in February. But yeah, I mean, you guys are out there. Like right. you said, it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter your walk of life. No. That's that leadership mentality is you're, you're going in, you're starting as a great <laughs> you're just being humble and just eager to grow and learn. Right. And you know what? Um, here's something to think about. At any age and stage we're at now, how, how successful you are. Two things always come to my mind. Stay humble and stay hungry. Sir. Stay humble and stay hungry. Stay humble, guys. I don't care you're a master. I don't care you're, you've been in teaching for 35 years. Guess what? I come to Sensei Dwayne. I, know, I don't expect anything. I just want to be a student. I didn't even, I didn't even want a student to know that I taught another school. Yes. A couple of weeks ago, I trained with this beginner. He's only been there for two weeks. And... At the end of it, he comes up to me as I'm stretching out. He says to me, oh, man, you're good. I go, <laughs> you must be one of the teacher here. I go, no, I'm just a student. I'm just a student. <laughs> Look, you're just a student? I go, yep, I'm just a student. I'm just learning just like you are. Guys, title means nothing. Title means nothing. Sure. Remember, title doesn't make you a leader. What makes you a leader is look to your left and look to your right and serve those people every day. That's what makes you a leader, that people want to follow. So stay humble, but definitely stay freaking hungry, man. I am hungry every day. As a refugee, I was physically hungry. Yeah. But now I'm mentally hungry for life, to live the best life I can, do the things I need to do to impact this world before I leave, to make an imprint. I'm hungry for that. Awesome. Going to be, uh, so speaking of the humility, I don't know if you remember this interaction or not, um, it was it was last August, so it was uh, the first time I came out to HQ. I drove out by myself, so I've been out there once. We've flown out, and then last last uh, summer I drove out. I was out there for two weeks. Uh, you and I trained together, um, and I, I didn't know who you were. You know, you just you came in. You thought you know, I thought you were another student. I'm sure I was wearing my, my blue shirt at the time, um, but you know, we're just you know two people in there. We were training partners. We trained. And uh, as the class was going, we were working on technique, and I, you know, always wanting to, to be coaching and be sharing and helping people. I was kind of, uh, in my mind, like you know, sharing some pointers with you and stuff. Again, not knowing who you were. And then um, that night or the next night, I ended up uh, calling you on Instagram, finding out who you were, and I felt very, very silly. I was like, this guy. You were, and I was like, who do I think I am? I don't know how to do the techniques and stuff. But you, you were just the, the most humble person. Like, yeah. I, Probably already knew what I was telling you. I was you know, probably just blowing smoke or whatever, you know. Could have been stuff you already knew, but you didn't say, yep, I already know. Or you said, yes, you listened to what I was saying. You were so willing to listen and process whatever, you know, whatever it was I had to offer, which I think is a huge sign of leadership, but it's a huge uh, sign of humility as well. You can learn from everything. It doesn't matter if you are. I appreciate that. Yeah. So, I appreciate uh, that. Like I said, I don't know how much you remember it, but that sticks out very prominently. I remember that training time, yes. No, I remember that for sure. <laughs> you know, what? Um, but that, what you said just brings up something about leadership that I, I preach is, uh, you know, in your, I have a monthly group meeting with 27 team members. It's mandatory. They come, we talk about leadership. They take notes and do all that stuff, right? So we, we teach about that. And um, <clears throat> here's a, a good way to teach about ideas and events at your school. And I'd say this, any event you do, it could be in the music world or whatever. You know, if you, if I, if I was teaching you guys, I, I come up with a great idea and I go in there, I say, hey guys, I have this buddy day idea. I want to do this. I want to do this and do this. All right. Quince, what do you think? Coach Rick, what do you think? But if I tell you my ideas first, 
I tainted the whole room already. Leaders learn to speak last. Zip up their mouth. They say this, here's what I would do. I said, hey guys, I want to come up with a buddy event. I need to get ideas from you guys. Can you help me? Now guess what happens? You didn't take the idea. You give your team a chance, a voice, a platform to speak. And then only at the end, you listen to everybody in your tribe. And then you say, awesome. I love the idea of that one maybe, but here's what I think too. They go, okay, see? So leaders learn to speak last without tainting anything and give the platform for the team to be heard. It's a very important skill because one of the important skills a lot of people lack is the skill of listening. The skills of listening. Yeah. Of, of all the gems, you know, even just in this conversation, uh, and we've had a lot of great conversations, uh, you know, prior to, and even just between uh, Rick and I, uh, that might be one of my favorite quotes, favorite lines right there. Leaders speak last. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, no, I, I <clears> and, appreciate it. and if you have a group meeting your team, don't let, don't, don't let them line up. If you line up, guess what that makes people feel? There's a hierarchy. Get in a circle. In the African tribe, that's what they do. They sit in a circle. Even the leaders sit in the circle with them. No one's above anyone else. We all have a voice to speak. I get my team, we sit in a circle. We don't line up our belt rank or anything, we sit in a circle. Fantastic. Um, did you have anything to uh, add to? Because um, I've got something on my mind or, uh, that I wanted to ask a question, but it's kind of uh, more of a side note. Uh, no, I'm, I, I want you to speak first. Yeah, I see. Already putting it to good use. So you, you've talked a lot about uh, adversity, even at a younger age. Um, so you found different ways to overcome it. Uh, what, and I'm thinking often uh, about, you know, going through COVID for the very first time, everybody going through it, having to adapt to that um, adversity. How did you keep your morale up, not only uh, just within yourself, but like with the team? How did you right. guys, how did you guys uh, battle that uh, adversity? And also, um, what advice on adversity do you think you could give that you've learned? Well, that's a good question. Uh, man, you guys ask, you guys are hammering me. <laughs> <laughs> we um, have so much knowledge to share. We, we want uh, every minute we can extract. <laughs> here's what I can say about uh, adversity during the COVID season. Uh, and I said this to my team right on March of last year. I said, leaders don't motivate during tough times. They don't do that. It's now it's more time. Leaders step up and they inspire. There's a difference between motivation and inspiration. Inspiration is a short word for in spirit. It's in you to inspire the people to do the right thing. You don't say, it's time to get going. Hey, that time's done. We're in the thick of things right now. Leaders don't motivate during hardship. They inspire. They step up, they lead from the front. Now guess what? You're gonna fail many times as you lead. But if you're real with people and let them know that, you know what, yeah, guys, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. It's not a good thing to do this right now. Let's get back on Zoom, let's do this. That's why I wanna do this. As long as you're in front and during the hard season, guess what? You have to be in front of your tribe every day. Guess how I got in front of my tribe? Well, in our organization, Longmont, we have over 300 members, right? Over 300 members. And you know how I connect with my team? I have 27 on my team. What's app? We're on a thread. And I'm, I'm on them every seven days a week. Hey, Quince, good job the other night, buddy. You, you killed in that class. You, I love the way you talk with that one kid over there. Everyone jumps in. I said, good job, Quince. Way to go, buddy. Right? I'm on. So when you're going through some tough time, you better have a great team that believes in you. So the culture that I preach about our other time, another culture I said first, now you know Good times, culture is easy to build. Mm. But when during the hard times, your culture will be put to the test. And guess what? My culture was put to the test and we've passed with flying colors because everybody stepped up on my team. Mm. Why? I put myself out there. I said, I'm the first one to go. Mm. I will lead the way. You shall follow and you make an impact wherever you're at. If you can't do it, I understand, but you can, I will appreciate it. Be real. 
That's how you lead people through hard times. You can see how passionate I am when I'm speaking, man. Yeah, <laughs> this is, this is who I am. This is what, when, when you found your icky guy and you found the meaningful reason for being, man, you can preach it. I, I, I hate speaking. Growing up, I, I went to college, I got an architect degree because I only went to college because my Asian culture. They told me to go to college. The moment I graduate, I did martial arts. <laughs> but I only went to college to honor my dad because my dad was a single father who took care of five kids on his own. So what I learned, my first mentor was my father. My father was an amazing man. He took care of five kids on his own. And when I talk about hardship, man, listen, if you want to understand hardship, you must go through it. In the Bible, it says, I shall walk through the valley of death. It didn't say, I shall camp in the valley of death. It says, I shall walk. That means when I'm going through some toughest time in my life, I will continue to take baby steps, even though sometimes I don't want to. I will take the baby steps. And those baby steps will turn into walking, turn into running again in your life. That's what I should do. So that's what you need to do. Now I love preaching. I love preaching to my team. I love preaching to my students or share my knowledge with you guys, anyone else. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, it's true. It's true. I, uh, he and I, we talk often or maybe I just talk often, but I say <laughs> that uh, you know, once I found this, how do you say it? What's the icky guy? Icky guy. Icky guy. Icky guy. Spell, uh, spell I-K-I-G-I. -I. I I-K-I-G-I. Oh. -I. Okay. G-A-I. 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 Icky guy. So uh, it made everything else seem easier. Once I was like, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it. And this is how I'm going to do it. Now, those two uh, side jobs, those two nine to fives that I got to work double shifts, I don't mind that anymore because I know what right. I'm working for. Now, yep. going to school at night, I know exactly now why I'm going back. I failed out, what, maybe two times before because I had no real direction. But once I had that motivation and that understanding, everything became easier. Like you said, now, you don't mind getting up in yeah. front of people that you, whether you know them or not, and this right. is what you love to do, and that's all you got to do is just what you love to do. It's it's like the secret, you know. It's like a loophole to life. Well, how did you find your Ricky? I mean, you didn't start out. What was your job before this? Not me. Oh man, I've had <laughs> so so. I went to college years ago for um, coaching and phys ed because I was a good athlete. So I was okay. like, oh, I guess that's what I'm supposed to do. That's what they're telling me to do, and it just never stuck. So I went from coaching to then doing random, you know, like retail management and stuff like that for years while I was figuring out where I really uh, it needed to be. And for me, it took, you know, it took hardship for me, for everything right. to crash, for me to be like, what is worth living? What inspires me every morning when I wake up? Because what I'm doing now is not it. Uh, and so once yep. making that decision uh, and, and digging that deep, and having nothing else to lose, man, that was the most freeing thing that I had ever come across. Well, that's, I, that's good. Uh, amen to you, brother. I mean, because listen, not, not many people will find that life. I tell you, I preach in so many places. And uh, you know what? I, I'm proud that you get a chance because we need more people like you. Because when you have your purpose in life, you shine and you can impact more people. That's it. Yes, sir. You need more people like that. So I, that's awesome. I, I love that story. Share that story more. <laughs> what, do you hey, mean, what do you think I do on the radio all day? Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> no, but it's true. You know, that's it, right. Everybody, listen, everybody has a story to tell. But it's how you tell it and how you, you, how you preach it out there and let people know that, you know what, anything's possible. You just have sure. to be willing to be willing to put in the hard work. That's where people go wrong. People want the black belt, but not want the journey to get to black belt. Yeah, you know, yeah, people yeah. always want the shortcut. Man, I don't know of any shortcut in my life. Every shortcut was paid through some so many tears and hardship in my life. From the moment I grew up in a war-torn country, escaped on a boat, and I didn't even, we didn't know where we were gonna live or not at sea, my family, come to this country, put on food stamp and welfare. Oh my gosh, starting from that place, to where we are today, where we can retire, 
and do the things we want to do, man, the sky's the limit, guys. I just, I, I don't understand it sometimes. And the thing is that people say, well, I had a hard pass. But hell, the moment I was born in Vietnam, my mom dropped me in the water during, when she was escaping from the war. And I almost died. That was my birth. So don't tell me you had a hard path. I did too. But what are you going to do about it? Mm, it is. What are you going to do about it? Don't give me an excuse. Just get up and get your ass moving. Put in the work, sweat, equity it takes to get there. If you can't find it, find the right people. The environment is everything. I don't care if you give a fish a million dollars and put the fish in a mansion, it's still going to die. Because the fish <laughs> is not the right environment. But when you put the fish back in the right environment, it's going to live. Mm. Put yourself in the right environment. Those people will help you to grow. That's it. Period. That's it. That's it. <clears throat> Love it. I, you know, I find it interesting because uh, this is even a, a sort of revelation I come to myself back when I first started training. This was years ago. Um, you know, outside looking in, uh, it never crossed my mind that, oh, this is a place that I would enjoy being. You know, I'm like, oh, these guys, they're fighting every day. They're probably a bunch of assholes. Probably it's just, you know, has to do with violence. And it's probably, you know, all of these, you know, very shallow understandings. And once I get into it, it's the conversations, you know, it's the philosophy, it's the mindset. I'm like, oh, yeah, we've got a million things to come, a million things to learn from each other. How? What would you say to those people, the same that I was years and years ago, uh, outside looking in to what goes on in the dojo, in the gym, whether it's at yours or whether it's at other gyms that you've been to? And, 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 I, and I, I might not be asking it right. In regards to people that think it's just fighting. It's just what? Fighting, fighting. Fighting, fighting. Fighting, okay. yes, yes. What, what would you tell those people? Well, I guess that starts from the leadership, who, whoever's teaching that school, whoever's the master instructor at that school. You know, because, you know, there's some schools that focus more on fighting. You know, those schools focus more on tradition. Everyone's school is different. And the thing is, it's not bad schools, it's only bad teachers. You know, it's why that too. And, and so it depends on the people who teach it. For me personally, I believe martial arts saved my life. You know, I really believe that because during the hardest season of my life when I was bullied so many times and this kid was ruthless at me in middle school. Man, he was ruthless. And he was a lot bigger. I was a scrawny 25 pounds, 125 pounds in middle school, a skinny little Asian kid, you know. I took three months of uh, Taekwondo and I said, I finally had the courage. When he came by me one day and he pushed me in a lock, I said, damn it. I'm gonna see you at the tree after school. <laughs> and our school, when we say the tree, we know exactly where that is. And back in the 80s, that's how you, you do business. I said, I'm gonna see you at the tree after school. And when I walked away, I go, oh my God, what did I just say? I, I couldn't <laughs> think all day, I was so scared because this kid had been bullying me for so long. Afterwards, I, had, I walked towards that tree, the school bell rang, I walked, I was shaking. When I walked, all his friends were there because I didn't have any friends. They're all in a circle. Imagine this, Asian scrawny little kid walking in a circle with no voice in this world. I put up my dukes and I went at it. I sat on top of that kid and beat the hell out of him. Mm. I pointed to him, I said, never call me a racist name again, never. From that moment on, I found my voice in this world. And because of certain things that happened in my past, I believe the martial art is a vehicle to change lives. It's not a vehicle. I never say that to people. I say martial arts is a vehicle to fight. I believe a martial art, for me personally, is a vehicle to change lives, to be transformer. So it's, my name is Trans. I'll say it's transformation. Mm. Right? It's a transformation. If you let it, this place can change you. Drop your ego at the door. When you bow at the door, drop the ego there. Come humble, come hungry. We will help change you. So it always starts up with leadership. That's it. If your leadership is all about, oh, let's, we have a match this coming weekend, we're going to fight, we're going to do this, then that's the culture of that school, and that's okay. There's a different crowd for that. That's not my crowd. I have over 300-some members and a lot of parents, a 
lot of parents. If you watch my Instagram post there, they had a lot of teenagers too. People say, teenagers are worthless. In my school, they're amazing. I could know why. I give them a place that they can be heard, a platform to shine. That's what you do. It starts at the top of leadership. Vehicle to change if you let it. If you if let you it. If you let it. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. it. That's yes, sir. So, um, one of the, the things that uh, I like to talk about um, with the other coaches and the other students that I meet through training under Sensei Ludwig, so you talk a lot about culture, uh, and obviously every academy, every dojo, every school has a, has a unique culture. Um, right. <laughs> one of the things um, that is very common um, with the Bang Muay Thai affiliates is the use of Heard with the phrase "os," "os," and I always love when I have the opportunity. Uh, being you know, you're a man. You use a lot of words that stick out to you. Um, I think you guys, one of them, uh, culture is one of them, right? So words obviously have a tremendous amount of power with you. Um, you and I have used this word a lot uh, most in conversation. Um, you always use it around the gym. It always means something. It always, obviously, it has a specific definition. It always means something a little bit different to everyone and how we use it. And I would absolutely love if you would explain to us what that means to you and why it is found such a prominent place in your vocabulary. Well, us is a Japanese term, right? So it's a they spell in different ways as well, but the way Bang spells it is OSU. And I've, I've trained different styles that use that. One way to think about us is, is like saying, yes, sir, right? Or it's an understanding. Oh, yeah, yeah, I understand. And also, it's a way of respect. You know, when somebody says certain things, like, Ooh, that means you, you're listening. You know, it's a way of listening, a way of respect, a way of honoring your, your teacher that you understood they actually listened to him. Us is also, to me, means the way. Way, W-A-Y, the way. And the way is... The way is, is, the, uh, is a lifestyle, right? Us is a lifestyle, it's what we live, right? It's how we live our life. Some people believe, you know, it's being a martial artist is just like uh, Quince was saying, you know, fighting maybe, right? So eventually your day or your time will come when uh, the ring and the case career will end. What would be the way for you then? So us to me, the way is the way we live our life every day. Us is the way of respect, of harmony, the way you show and honor your teacher, tradition. Right? When I say us to sensei, that means I honor him. More than I understood him, that means I honor him. I respect him. You know, I respect the way, his way of life. So that to me is what us means. It's the way of honoring somebody. I feel like I've got a couple months worth of stuff to sit on, yeah. dig in, reflect on. This this is great, I man. I, I I've had a blast. First and foremost, before this uh, conversation was um, in stone, you know, 100. percent He was like, he kept saying, "I'm pretty sure this is the, the guy, right?" You're like, there might be a chance that that this might happen. This guy. He, you know, he didn't give me an answer yet, but if we could get him, you know. So I, I was looking forward to this for quite some time, and uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the time and the words, years, and the experience that you've been sharing with us, um, you know, and the listeners here that you know, tune in on a regular way. Thank you. Uh, hey, Quince, I appreciate that. I, I want to leave you guys with this, is that um, both of you guys have a, a powerful way of influencing people. From Quince being on the radio, and from uh, Coach Rick, uh, inspiring through martial arts, you guys have a huge platform right now to um, create and impact this world. I want to make sure that you guys continue as you guys move forward. You guys think about the things you guys do in this world and how what legacy you will leave behind for the next generation. For me, it's about legacy driven, guys. Legacy driven. What legacy you leave behind? That's important. I know you guys have a powerful platform to do these things, so I appreciate you guys sharing some positivity out there to the people who want to learn. 
you know, uh, the, the way. He wants to learn the way and to move forward. That's why too. So, Quince, keep doing you, buddy. Uh, you found your icky guy. Man, that's amazing. I love talking to more people. And same thing with Coach Rick. You found your icky guy, man. This is something you love, something you do, something you make, uh, make a living off of, and the impacts of your community. Keep doing it. Keep doing it, guys. We need more people like us out there to show the good vibe and put in a better place. You know, we've been, this country in the last year and a half has been through hell. So many racial tension up and down with COVID and everything you think, things going on in Afghanistan, everything. When they walk into your school, Coach Rich, because they want to get rid of all that negativity from their life. Let that place be a platform for them to change their life because of you. That's what it's all about. And Quince, let your voice on the air be that voice that can change their life. Somebody might believe listening to your voice on the radio driving home one day might even think about committing suicide because they heard you said something, their life changed. That, to me, is impactful. That's legacy-driven. All right, guys? Indeed. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. But thanks for having me here today. I really appreciate you guys a lot. Coach Tran, time. this is yeah, absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for, for sharing your passion with us. And uh, um, I know for a fact anybody that takes some time to listen to this episode is going to walk away with a great change. Um, absolutely. Coach, you're doing amazing things out there in Colorado. I absolutely cherish the time uh, that we shared on the mat. And then uh, thank you so much for taking your time to, to chat with us and um, look forward to many, many more uh, wonderful conversations. All right, Coach Rick, thank you, brother. And uh, thank you, Quince, for having me, guys. I'm honored, humble. As always, keep spreading the love and have a good night. Yes, sir. Right. You do the same, Coach.